designers and welcome back to Remton Games. I know I haven't posted in a while, but I'm finally back with some Pokemon AI content. Specifically, I decided to try my hand at making an AI, or actually a couple AIs, for Pokemon Showdown. In this video, I'll first be taking a look at why and how I made these bots, and how you too can make your own Pokemon Showdown battle bots. After that, we'll take a look at them in action, where I'll be pitting them all against each other in a Pokemon AI Battle Royale. Finally, at the end of the video, I'll be answering some questions about my previous Pokemon Emerald AI project, and I have an announcement for future work that you'll definitely want to stick around for. If you want to skip to any of these sections, you can check the timestamps in the description or the chapters in the video below. Let's start by taking a look at how and why I made these bots. I assume most of you are already familiar with Pokemon Showdown, but for those who aren't, it's an online Pokemon battle simulator where you can build teams and compete against other players online. I decided to make bots for Pokemon Showdown because I really wanted to focus on the battling aspect of the game without having to worry about distractions like navigating the world, solving puzzles, or how to capture Pokemon. For the same reason, I chose to focus on the random battle format where each player is given a random team of six Pokemon so I could only focus on making the best decisions in battle without having to worry about things like team building. Of course, I was far from the first person to have this idea, so the first step was doing research on previous work in the field. There have been a handful of research projects in the past several years that had a similar focus to this one, of designing and testing Pokemon battle bots, and I'll leave links in the description to several of those if you're interested in reading more. Some of these projects even had open source GitLab repositories available for download, which was very helpful. The Pokemon Showdown source code is already open source, but I also ended up using another library called PokeENV, written by Harris Sahavik. PokeENV basically made it easier to send messages and receive information from Pokemon Showdown. It was incredibly user-friendly and well-documented, and I would 100% recommend it to anyone who's interested in trying their hand at their own bots. A link to the repository is in the description. The Poke EMV documentation comes with a set of getting started tutorials that help players get acquainted with the library, and using these tutorials I made the first two of my bots, Random Player and Max Damage Player. Both of these bots are incredibly simple. Random player simply chooses a random move every turn, whereas max damage player simply chooses the move with the highest base damage value without paying attention to anything else. These bots were fine for educational purposes, but there was plenty of room for improvement. The next bot I made was what I call a rule-based AI. Rule-based AIs basically make decisions by following a flowchart. If this thing is true, then do this action, otherwise do this action instead. These AI can be quite complicated and can also be incredibly effective, but are among the least sophisticated types of AI. The effectiveness of these types of bots depends entirely on the knowledge of the person creating them, and the only way to improve them is to add more and more effective rules. I called this bot the Smart Damage Player. But it's really not that smart, except compared to the dummies that the previous AIs were. In fact, this bot was pretty simple and used rudimentary rules to determine whether it should switch and which attacks it should use each turn. Basically, it first uses information about the type matchup and speed tiers to determine if it's in a disadvantageous matchup, and if it is, it decides to switch. If it does decide to switch, then it'll try to switch to the Pokémon with the best matchup. If it doesn't switch, then it's going to do a simplified version of the damage calculation to try to determine which move is going to inflict the most damage to its opponent. The next bot I made was a search-based AI. These AI make decisions by searching through a bunch of different possibilities and trying to sort out which is the best one. For games, this is usually done by constructing what is called a game tree, which basically maps out all of the different actions that each player can take. You start at the top with the current state of the game, and then below that you have branches for all of the different actions that you can take this turn. 
Then, each of those branches have sub-branches for each of the actions that the opponent can take in response. And then for each of those, you have your actions, and then your opponent's actions, and so on and so forth, all the way down until somebody wins the game. Now you've mapped the entire game, and all you have to do is follow the path that leads to victory. Simple, right? At least in theory. For a simple game like Tic-Tac-Toe, it's relatively easy to map out the entire game. However, for anything more complicated, this quickly becomes impossible due to the physical limitations of the computing hardware. For Pokémon, constructing the entire game tree is completely out of the question. Even if we simplified the game so you can't switch, this still leaves us with four moves to choose from each turn. We call this number the branching factor. Assuming that the average Pokémon game lasts about 20 turns, and we have to estimate moves for both ourselves and our opponents, this means that we'd have to calculate 4 to the 40th different states just at the lowest level of our tree. That's 1.2 septillion different states to deal with, and this is a very conservative estimate. The real number is probably many orders of magnitude larger. Since we clearly can't calculate the whole tree, we have to set a limit at how deep we go and how many different moves we look at. There are several different ways of searching through the game tree. The technique that I chose for this project was called Minimax. Minimax works by searching through the tree all the way down to the bottom level and then working its way back up to assign each node a score. The bottom nodes in the tree, called leaves, are given a score based on the state of the game at those nodes. For example, the score increases when I damage or knock out one of my opponent's Pokémon, and decreases when my Pokémon takes damage. Once all the bottom nodes are scored, those scores work their way back up the tree. The levels in the tree alternate between my moves and my opponent's moves. For each level that represents my opponent's moves, their score is the minimum of all of their children. This is because we assume that my opponent is trying to minimize my score and limit my actions. For each of the moves that represent our own actions, we choose the maximum of the options because, of course, we want to maximize our own score. Once the scores have worked their way all the way back up to the top of the tree, we've basically determined the safest action to take. The action that's going to turn out the best, assuming that my opponent is playing optimally. I had high hopes for my Minimax boy, but to be honest, it didn't perform as well as I expected. With a search depth of 1, it performed about as well or maybe a little better than my rule-based bot. However, as I increased the maximum depth of the tree, it actually started to perform worse rather than better. The first explanation is simply that there's a bug in the code somewhere. I tried to work out all the bugs the best I could, but it's entirely possible that I missed some. So it could just be that. The second possibility is simply that traditional search-based game tree methods don't apply as well to Pokémon. Game tree search is designed for games that alternate between one player and the next, and Pokémon doesn't really work that way. Instead, both players choose their actions simultaneously, and the game decides which action happens in which order. The final possible reason is simply that the bot doesn't have enough information to make smart decisions. This could be for a few different reasons. First, there's simply a lot of things like status effects, weather conditions, and entry hazards that my bot just doesn't take into account. Maybe if it did, it'd be able to make better decisions. And this goes for my rule-based bot as well. Another source of missing information is simply the game itself. For one thing, in order to produce a game tree, I have to try to predict what actions my opponents are going to take, but the fact is I don't know everything about my opponent. I don't know what moves they have until they use them, I don't know what Pokémon they have until they switch to them, and I don't know what stats their Pokémon have, although I can try to estimate. This missing information makes it impossible to accurately predict what my opponent's gonna do. There's also just a lot of randomness inherent in Pokémon battles. Attacks can miss or get critical hits, some attacks have multiple hits, while others add additional effects such as flinching or status effects. Even a simple attack like Tackle has some randomness involved in exactly how much damage it does. 
Because of all this, perhaps the reason that my decisions get worse as I go further down the tree is simply because all of this randomness and missing information makes it harder to make accurate predictions. One type of bot I did not create was an AI that uses machine learning. This is because I don't really think Pokemon is a great application of machine learning. And my research seems to support this. For example, the paper Showdown AI Competition proposes a competition between various different Pokemon Showdown AIs, and they pit several different techniques against each other. In this competition, there were two different deep reinforcement learning bots, one with a single layer network and one with multiple layers. Both of these bots performed pretty poorly against the other techniques that they were faced against. I simply think that the vast amount of state information that a reinforcement learning agent would have to keep track of, including almost 900 Pokemon species and over 800 different moves, as well as the randomness inherent in the game, make this a very non-ideal use of machine learning. There have been researchers that have made effective machine learning bots for Pokemon type games but most of these games are very simplified and take away a lot of the particular challenges of Pokemon. Now that we've discussed the different bots and how they work, let's see what they can do with a round robin tournament. In this tournament, there will be five different competitors. Four of them we've already met. The random player, the max damage player, the smart damage player, and the minimax player. The fifth bot was actually made by Harris Sahavik, the creator of Poke ENV, and it's called the Simple Heuristics Player. It's basically another rules-based bot that's a more sophisticated version of my own. I pitted each of these bots against every other one in a thousand battles, and I've put the results in the table on screen. As expected, the random player is the clear loser, losing a vast majority of battles to every other bot. However, there are still a few interesting things to note. The first is that, even though it lost quite badly every time, it still won a few matches against every other player. It's also interesting that the Minimax player did particularly bad against the random player. This is probably because the Minimax player is trying to predict its opponent's actions, and this is impossible to do against a player that is unpredictable. The next worst bot was also the next simplest, the max damage player, which lost to everything except the random player. After that was the minimax player and the smart damage player, with our winner being the simple heuristic player. The heuristic player definitely has the most in-depth decision-making process and takes the most factors into account. However, I think there's still a lot of room for improvement. I have some ideas of how I can improve the decision-making abilities of both my Minimax and my rules-based bots, but to be honest, I think the main way I'm going to improve their performance is simply by adding more complicated rules and scoring functions. I think this project has really made me appreciate just how complex Pokémon battling really is and the incredible number of things that have to be taken into account to make smart decisions. I'll probably follow up on this at some point in the future and try to significantly improve my bots. However, that's going to require a lot of brute force programming and this project was already more than my schedule can handle. That's all I have to say about these bots and I really hope you enjoyed learning about them. However, before I end the video, I want to talk a bit about my previous Pokemon AI project because I know a lot of people have a lot of questions and I want to try to answer some of the main ones. One of the big questions I get about the Emerald bot is, how far did it get on its own? And the answer is... not very far. That project was far from perfect and was made during a pretty limited time window. On its own, I know it did get far enough to choose its own Pokémon and face against the rival the first time. However, I don't think it ever got much further than that. The software interface honestly wasn't great, and that's to be expected because I wasn't really using it for what it was intended for, and even just trying to step one square in a specific direction was pretty finicky to get the timing right, and despite my best efforts, my bot usually ended up getting stuck somewhere. However, I've since realized that trying to make a Pokémon bot that handles every aspect of playing the game was doomed from the start. Even if I could get the battling and mapping functions to work perfectly, 
a pretty big ask considering how non-intuitive the user interface is, it still wouldn't be enough. Some people have asked how the bot deals with puzzles, and the answer is it doesn't. Pokemon games are full of clever navigation puzzles. Most of the gyms and enemy bases are full of things like moving floors and teleportation tiles, and the overworld requires you to use specific HM abilities such as Cut and Surf in order to progress. There really isn't a simple way to program the bot to deal with these kinds of hurdles. Some of you have asked how the bot does with backtracking, when you have to go back to previous areas in order to progress forward. It actually does pretty well with these types of problems, at least in theory. The search algorithm is designed to keep track of the order in which it visits various spaces, and when it runs out of new spaces to go to, it's designed to backtrack to the space that it visited least recently. I believe it successfully walked to the end of Route 102 and back, and given enough time, it would theoretically revisit every space. This would be a slow process, but the idea is that it would sort of loop around the world, getting a little bit further each time. Of course, in practice, this is impossible due to some of the issues that I've mentioned previously. I know many of you were disappointed with my previous video because you wanted to see an AI play completely through a Pokemon game. I want to see that too, and unfortunately, I failed to deliver. Given all the challenges that we've talked about up to this point, the only way I can think of making this project feasible is by making a specific ROM hack that was designed from the ground up to be bot friendly. This is something that would take a huge amount of work and isn't really possible for me right now. However, I'm gonna make a commitment right here and right now. If my channel should ever grow to 100,000 subscribers, I promise to make a completely customized version of Pokemon, upgrade my bot to play all the way through it, I'll stream the whole thing on Twitch and upload the complete playthrough here on YouTube. Will that ever happen? Who knows? But I'd love to do it and I'll bet you'd love to see it. What I do know is that's all I have for today. If you like the video, or if you want to see an AI play all the way through a Pokemon game, make sure that you leave a like, subscribe, and maybe even tell a friend about the channel. If you want to see more, definitely check out my previous Pokemon AI video if you haven't, and I have a bunch of other programming, Pokemon, and game design videos on this channel that I think you'll like. And join me next time for the ultimate Settlers of Catan strategy guide. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.